Welcome back for another Top Notch video. This week, guys, we we'll be talking about the week of the 29th of July through August 2nd. What a week it was for the TSP and markets. So, as always, our channel is about the CSI and F funds, or that it translates to, uh, for those Roth IRA, 401k, brokerage account people, IVV, VXF, EFA, and AGG. TSP people, 401k, Roth IRA, brokerage account people. What that translates to is the S&P 500, small caps, international markets, and bonds. We do a review of these every week, and so if you want to learn more, go ahead and like, subscribe, share this video, and we'll get right into it. So as always, we go over a kind of a general overview of what we're looking at. So for the markets this week, uh, for the week of uh, this, this kind of first week of July, or I'm sorry, August, we did have a down week. We had some pretty negative percentages for our C, S, and I funds. All three of our stock funds were down while the S fund was up quite significantly, almost a whole point. So that was pretty significant this week. I do have that on a chart to kind of show you what that looks like. It only goes through August 1st. But as you can see, most of our TSP funds were lacking for the most part. And then um, we we did not take the hit for that for the most part. As you guys know, we decided to transfer out on the 17th of July. We transferred to the G fund. We were looking for a spot to get in this week and we just did not see it happen. And it was a good choice to stay out of uh, pretty much market funds as markets tumbled after that Fed rate interest rate. And then uh, basically we got a tariff tweet and then the jobs report. So. We knew markets were going to move this way. We didn't really know which way. We decided to stay out and hold off, and it ended up being very well for us. Uh, for the month of July, as you can see, since July 17th, basically, we uh, did very, very well in markets. This is when we decided to get out of the stock funds, and since then, we gained about almost a percentage point on the C fund, and almost a half percentage point on the S fund. We'd like to see about a 2% increase before we get back into stocks or uh, a good entry point. Have not seen that on our technical charts, so we're waiting for that. And when we do, we'll let you guys know. Of course, uh, please follow us on our Facebook page and Twitter account to get those updates. Another really interesting thing was for the month of July. So if we took look at July, the whole month, which I'll pull up right now. Stocks gained, uh, the best fund we gained was 1.8% uh, for the S fund for the entire month of July. If you look at top notch, what we gained, we gained 1.16 for the entire month. So we outperformed all market funds for the month. So that was a really good positive thing. Currently we're sitting at about 15.6% for our yearly return. So based off the markets, we are a little bit below that, but we are closing that gap quite significantly and quite closely. Depending on when we get back in on this market jump, we could be pretty close to those funds. But right now, the only two funds that are beating us out are the C and the S fund. Other than that, we are doing very well at that 15%. If you guys have questions, go ahead and write those in the comments below. Now we're going to get more into our technical analysis. As always, we start with YYY. IYY, IYY is a general market fund. Basically shows us what everyone's doing in the market, can kind of see, kind of get a general overview of what everyone's going on. We have some pretty significant down action towards the end of the week here. As you can see, markets hit their 50-day moving average. We also have a trend line here. Could possibly see a bounce off of this. We'll have to wait and see. We'd like to see the four-hour chart pick up if we're going to see that. When we move over to our technical charts, on a weekly scale, we saw our first down energy based off our DO oscillator. And then the PPO line, the blue line, is about to move below that red line. When that happens, we usually see um, a little bit of market loss. We, we timed it just a little earlier on this last one. We, 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 did, we did profit from this one, too, back in May. Spinning top here for price, so we could possibly see markets go down on a quicker chart, two-day chart. We are already negative, so want to stay out of IYY, or we'd like to stay out of our stock funds, typically when IYY is negative, and on a four-hour chart, not seeing any buy-in points right now. The only thing that we're seeing really going for IYY is uh, basically we're outside the Bollinger Bands. Other than that, though, <clears throat> our blue line's way below our red line on the four-hour chart, and our oscillator is in the negative with no positive improvement. Now we'll move into our actual funds. So this is IVV or the C fund. This follows the S&P 500. 
As you can see, it looks just like IYY, a lot of negative action, hitting that 50-day moving average, almost hitting this trend line here. We haven't broke this trend line since uh, early 2019, so I don't know. I don't think we'll see that happen. Seeing a test here, we don't predict markets. We just look at the charts. So when we look at the charts with IVV or the C fund on a weekly chart, you can also see we had our first week down week, which is not good uh, on a two-day chart. Basically, we had a down week. We're in the negative here as well. Our PPO line is below our moving average, so that blue is below the red line. We're seeing negative energy down here. And even on a four-hour scale here, guys, we see it way in the negative. Again, outside the Bollinger Bands here, uh, markets tend to stay, price tends to stay within the Bollinger Bands. That's our only positive sign, though. Um, I, I'd probably, we'll probably look at trying to get back in once this picks up a little bit and so we can try and capture as much a percentage as we can. But right now, markets are not looking good for IVV or the S&P 500 C fund. Moving on to VXF. VXF broke a serious trend line on Friday. We were down 1.3%. So that's a big down day. Going through that 50-day moving average, sitting right there on the line. The next support line would be the 200-day moving average. A um, lot of consolidation in here. Uh, I, I could definitely see that moving lower if we look at it from the chart perspective, guys. On a weekly scale, first week where we had some down action here, so nothing we want to see. We, we see a big spinning top here. Usually spinning tops mean um, indecision or a, a, a change in price for the future. Last big spinning top we had was right here, back here in May. And as you can see, it lead to a couple weeks here of downward movement uh, action. So we're kind of right around this area here uh, for what we are current day. So keep that in mind when you're looking at VXF or the S fund. Markets just rocketed down this week uh, off those last two day charts. We saw the PPO line or the blue line cross over that red line and we got our first negative energy here. So not good stuff on a four hour chart. Outside the Bollinger Bands here, that's the only positive thing. Other than that, we're seeing a lot of very similar things with our other charts. Not a good place to have funds right now, guys. Um, I would just, I would try to capitalize on this this time while we're outside the markets to gain a couple percentage, and we'll go from there. The next fund we're going to look at is EFA. This is International Markets or the I Fund. Really bad things happened for the I Fund this uh, the last couple weeks here. We're seeing it hit its 200-day moving average. If it decides to move lower than its 200-day moving average, we're going to be in trouble, guys. So the last time we saw that happen was back in the May-June area. It decided to bounce off of that but and consolidate. We are below our moving averages. We are below our trend lines on this chart. Want to stay away from EF, EFA at this time or the iPhone. Nothing really exciting to look into. We're seeing some negative energy on EFA after a very, very small positive energy. Lots of, ups, uh, lots of spinning tops here. And then a big tail, kangaroo tail here on this next price movement for our weekly chart for EFA. Two-day charts moving down, not good sign. We're out on the side of the Bollinger Bands here, but um, not a good sign. We closed up. Uh, we still have one more day here for this bar, but overall not a good day. And on our four-hour chart, as you can see, we're still sitting on the negative, just sitting on the lower end of that Bollinger Band. We had a really tight cluster here, so we could see a, probably a pretty big move like that. And as you can see, we did move down a little bit, but I, I would expect it to move down even more and probably bounce off that. It's either going to bounce off that 200-day moving average or it's going to continue downward. We'll have to wait and see next week what happens. Moving on to our last chart, which is AGG or bonds. This is the F fund for those TSP folks. Really, really big update for bonds. Still staying in this trend line that we've seen all year. This trend line's held for pretty much all of, um, I'd say it goes all the way back to December. They drew it all the way out to March, but it's, it's been going for quite some time. Seeing a huge, huge positive uh, increase here, um, upward movement of the 200-day moving average, unlike our other charts. As you can see, this 200-day moving average is not the, doing that there or here or here on any of our other charts. So. Good place to have funds right now. Um, we didn't make a move to AGG, but we put new capital uh, for this next month, for the month of August in AGG, so we'll have to wait and see how that does. Moving to our technical charts, as you can see on a weekly scale, 
We are moving down, but that blue line is still above the red line, so we're seeing some positive things here. Could possibly see a fake out here, so that would be really helpful. And on a two-day chart, we are seeing that just about ready to pop from the negative energy to positive energy on our oscillator. And the PPO line's about to cross the red line there. It has not yet. We might jump a little prematurely with a new monies into that account. <clears throat> That's why we haven't moved our full account balance over to the AGG fund just yet. And then on a four-day scale, we are doing very well. That PPO line is above the red line, doing well. We got a little pinch here. Usually when we get a pinch, we get a big price movement. Saw a big price movement move up off of that. And then on Friday, we moved a little bit down to try and get back into those Bollinger Bands. Overall, though, our, our uh, TSP funds are not doing so hot. We want to stay out of those stock funds and move more into bonds or AGG for a short-term basis until markets can pick back up. Long-term charts still look good, but with a lot of variables out there, probably going to see a little bit of a pullback here, guys, for the most part. All that being said, we're going to look at our funds, like I said, and we're going to show you our allocation. So right now, we've since the 17th of July, we've been sitting in the G fund or 100% in the G fund with new money allocation going to AGG or the F fund. We'll have to wait and see how that goes and how that turns out. But overall, I think that will do us very well as we wait out this uh, small market dip. Um, I'm kind of looking for the four hour to turn around for uh, us to jump back in. We are, like I mentioned, a little bit up on the TSP funds for our move on the 17th. We'll have to just wait and see what happens. If you guys have questions or concerns, go ahead and write those in the comments below. As always, you can go ahead and visit uh, my Twitter account or Facebook account. You can find those right here. Really appreciate your guys' support. Please like, subscribe, or share the channel. And that's another Top Notch video. We'll see you guys next time.